So there are always going to be things about contemporary society in a free society, and we are a free society, that one could point to and say, it's all going to shit. So that doesn't mean that at any given point is a time for despair. I am with, I'm with Ronald Reagan on this. Every generation has got to fight to maintain you know, freedom because we're not born with it in our blood. It's a generational torch that you pass on from one generation to, a generation to another. But there is so much catastrophism and so much doom scrolling in the culture that wants to say that it, things have never been worse. And you can pick the data sets, like in this case, life expectancy, and say, see, things have never been worse. But there's a lot of economics in Neil's essay in which he now doesn't say his essay is primary about economics because I think in part, there's just there's so many reasons to say that that we are not economically like the Soviet Union. And just one last point, like I am not the Davos guy here. I am not the Hamptons guy here. I don't live in some cocoon. Um, and the but the idea that somehow there are just Morlocks and Eloys in this culture, and it's the people who are parasitically living off the wealth of this country and the nomenclature and the nomenclatura, and then everyone else is dying from deaths of despair is just not true. In his piece, he concedes that a lot of this stuff is concentrated in certain areas, in certain demographics, and that means it's a it's a discrete but very serious problem. It is not, I don't believe, the case. That once you get outside the hall, the belt, the D.C. Washington, you know, D.C. New York cell corridor, um, that it's it's Mad Max territory out there. I just don't think there's data to prove that. I don't think there's data to prove that our standard of living's standard of living is anything that conjures anything like comparisons to the Soviet Union. And so again, I agree with him a lot about a lot of things. And on the on the on the Cold War II thing. I agree very much that we are entering a Cold War, and I think Neil deserves credit for being one of the first to point it out. I don't think it's necessarily a replay of the last Cold War. I'm not saying that he does. It's obviously it's got differences and similarities because Cold Wars are going to have differences and similarities. But there's a lot of cosplay on the American right that just wants to say um, we're just doing the whole thing over again, but we're going to cast the Soviets as the Chinese. And I think that is going to misidentify the threats from China, and it's going to misidentify the, 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 the resources that the United States has. I re I'm recording this from the Hamptons, so I, I, uh -huh. I'm very angry about these disparaging comments about where I am geographically right now. Uh, Neil, so, a lot to respond to in there. Well, I think what's amazing to me is the difficulty of persuading Jonah that you really need to take life expectancy and mortality rates seriously. You see, the, the, the argument, oh, well, things were really bad when I was growing up in New York would be compelling if there were any evidence in the aggregate national data that things were getting worse, but they weren't. Throughout American history until very recently, life expectancy just kept going up like it did everywhere else in the developed world. But what's amazing is that it has deteriorated so steeply in the last 20 years, and especially in the last decade, particularly for the bottom quintile of the income distribution. So much so that it shows up in aggregate national data. Now, nobody's dying prematurely in the Hamptons. In fact, for most Americans, this isn't palpable. But if you're in the bottom quintile of the income distribution, Jonah, your life expectancy is way worse than your counterparts in the other developed countries. That The most disadvantaged people in Japan and Switzerland live to be 60. Guess what age they live to on average in the US? 41. Infant mortality for the bottom quintile, particularly with uh, single parents, is almost emerging market developing country level, almost Soviet level, actually. And so we have to stop pretending, oh, it's been bad in the past. No, American life expectancy, mortality rates, all trended better for most of American history until recently. And what I what I struggle to convey to people is that if something is so bad that it shows up in the aggregate data and it's not happening anywhere else, and the only other example that you can find is the Soviet Union in the 1980s and Russia in the 1990s, there's something important here that we cannot dis 
we can't just dismiss it by saying, oh, you're doom scrolling. No, people are dying way, way too young in America. That isn't doom scrolling. Angus Deaton wasn't doom scrolling. He was looking at the data and the data are truly appalling. And only the Soviet Union has matched this in all of, mod all of modernity. So I don't think you're taking this seriously enough, Jonah. You're not. You're not recognising that it's an absolutely outrageous state of affairs that the, the quality of life of the people in the bottom quintile of the distribution is so bad that it now resembles late Soviet Russia. Yeah, so, you know, I, I understand, you know, as, as sort of an Oxbridge debater type, I understand kind of what you're doing here. The idea that somehow I am, first of all, rejecting the importance of this problem when I keep saying I think it's a real problem uh, is kind of weird, but I, I, I happy to stipulate this is a huge and important and, and legitimate problem that deserves our attention. Your essay wasn't because of the bottom, the plight of the bottom quintile in the United States in terms of deaths of despair. We are now like the Soviet Union. Your essay was about our economics. Your essay was about our Soviet justice system. Your essay was about a whole bunch of things. And as I pointed out in my response, I think you make a lot of good points. And you, but you, you treat this thing like it's a, like it's a Christmas tree and you hang a lot more, um, uh, less persuasive points on it as well, side by side and think people won't notice, notice the difference. So I'm perfectly happy to say again, this, as a matter of symptoms that we have a similarity with the Soviet Union in terms of deaths of despair. Um, the causes of these things are just, I think you have not demonstrated that they're, they're, um, they have the same root causes um, that they ha they would and therefore would require the same sorts of solutions. Nor do I think that they get to um, the fundamental indictment of the of, of the Soviet Union as on a on a moral scale, on a philosophical scale, on an economic scale um, that make the comparisons between us and them. I think fairly spurious. And look, I mean, again, if you're going to just say that things going bad makes us like the Soviets, you, you, well, look, the British Empire failed and declined. That doesn't mean it was like the Soviet Union. The Persian Empire failed and declined. It doesn't mean it was like the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union cannot well, be so, a, a metaphor for everything that goes bad in a country that is founded on completely different historical forces, intellectual concepts,